Hi, welcome to Change Mindsets with Louise Namara. Today I'd like to talk about uh, the determinant of a successful leader. Now many people say that the determinant of a successful leader is the qualities that they have. You know, they're visionary, good communicators, they're courageous and all that. But the true determinant of a successful leader is how many leaders have you raised as a leader? Do you have a successor? Yes, you may have all the money, you may be wealthy, you know, and uh, accomplish so much. But if you do not have a successor, you are not yet successful. Whether you are a leader of a business, whether small or big, or a country, organization, or, or a company, you need to have a successor. Now, let us look in to history, some of the examples of successful leaders and those who are successful. If you look at Alexander the Great, he became um, king at the age of 20 after his father, Philip. And he was very ambitious. He wanted to conquer the whole of Asia Minor. And during his conquest, the, his generals told him, you know what, you've conquered enough. Now let us go back home. You need to raise a family. And more to that, you need to raise an heir. But Alexander the Great refused and said, no, I am moving on. So it was after a while that he died of a tender illness without leaving an heir. And what happened is, his generals crumbled for what he and his father had struggled so hard to build and the kingdom was divided among his four generals. If you look at Joshua in the Bible, yes he was a successor of Moses but Joshua never left a successor and because of this there was chaos after Joshua passed away. Those are examples of leaders who were not successful because they never left a successor. Then we look at um, other examples of people who were really successful leaders like Jesus Christ. When he came to earth, he had a vision. And when he began to preach, the first thing he did was to, to look for heirs. Those were his 12 disciples. He taught them the word of God. He walked with them. He lived with them. And they saw how he, how, um, how he lived his life and they learned from him. He was a successful leader. No wonder up to today, his vision is still moving on all over the world. If you look at the kingdoms that we have, in the world and those that we had. It was very key for a king to have a successor because they believed in continuity. So they had to raise one, they walked to them, taught them how to be kings, you know, and the kings were forced to be very selfless such that because they knew that their princes would take over when they passed away. Now one problem that we have here in Africa is that most of the leaders do not want to pass on the baton. They do not want to teach the young people how to lead and to pass on the baton to them. They hold on to these positions of power, be it organizations, be it businesses, or, you know, whichever position of authority. Now, one thing that African leaders need to know is that one, when you're a leader, you'll always be a leader. The people that you raise, that you mentor, will always look up to you as a leader. Then, uh, passing on the baton brings satisfaction. If you look at Watoto Church, for example, Pastor Marilyn and um, Pastor Gary and Marilyn Skinner came here over 30 years ago to Kampala and they put up Watoto Church. And now you find that it's the young people whom he has raised who are actually running the church. And he sits back and he watches them. And he keeps talking about it of how proud he is to see his young people lead the church without even him having much hand in it. It comes with a lot of satisfaction. Then the African leaders need to know that you cannot lead for forever. There will always be another leader and a better one at that. So let us be wise as Africans and train the young people, train leaders, mentor them. And when you're looking for someone to, to mentor, look for those who are in the generation below you. Do not look for those who are in the same cohort with you. Because you are born in the same time, you will die in the same time. So if you pass on your baton to someone in your cohort, they will die at the same time with your vision. But look for those who are below you, the generation below you. Because they are more enthusiastic, more creative, more energetic. Look for those. You know? After you put up your mission, your vision, your values, the next thing to look out for is who am I going to train to be my successor? Many young people in Africa actually uh, have the potential and the passion to be leaders. But the people who are in the positions right now are sitting onto them, the older people. They do not want to let go. And this is affecting the growth of our organizations and institutions and our country because now those institutions are forced to move at the pace of those old people. 
and they're not as enthusiastic or creative as these young ones, you know. And because of this, it has forced the young people to push into leadership. But they are not as um, successful as they would be because they are not mentored by the people who are older. So what's the solution? Those who are in power, mentor the young people look out for someone to mentor yes they are very enthusiastic energetic and creative but you have the wisdom if you're to put all those qualities together it will enhance the growth and the development of the different institutions you know of the country of africa so please let us put that into practice thank you so much